Then King Darius issued a decree, and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. If you remember, uh, work had started. Some people came against in the time of, in, in a, came against Rebbebel and and J Joshua in the time of Artaxerxes. The work was stopped. Um, the work again started back up in the second year of King Darius. Work started back up, and now these folks are coming against and the 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 guys from the other side of the river. They're coming against, and there's um, and so they uh, they basically sent a letter to Darius and said, "Hey, who said these guys are allowed to do what they're doing?" King Darius did a search of the archives as was requested, found some documentation that basically from King from the decree of Cyrus and, and said, "Hey, not only." don't interfere with these guys but you know what you're gonna have to pay for everything they do day by day provide everything uh, that they need uh, you people from the other side of the river so that's kind of where we pick up then King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon and, and Akmitha in the palace that is in the province of Midia a scroll was found and in it a record was written thus in the first year of king cyrus king cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of god in jerusalem let the house be rebuilt the place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundations of it be firmly laid its heights 60 cubits and its width 60 cubits with three rows of heavy stones and one row of new timber let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury and let also let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem, and brought to Babylon, be restored and taken back to the temple, which is in Jerusalem. This is 130 years later, and they still have these, these items that they took from the temple. What, what a blessing that, they, that these are able to be restored which is in Jerusalem, each to its place, and deposit them in the house of God. Now, therefore, Tatnai, governor of the region beyond the river, and Chethar Bosnia, and your companions, the Persians who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of this house of God alone. Tatnai was a guy who made the complaint art exercises. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews, who is Zerubbabel, and the elders of the Jews, led by Joshua, build this house of God on its site. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews. For the building of this house of God, let the cost be paid to the king's expense from the taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men, so that they are not hindered and whatever they need young bulls rams and lambs for the burnt offerings of the god of heaven wheat salt wine oil according to the requests of the priests who are in jerusalem let it be given to them day by day without fail that they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to the god of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons also i issue a decree that whoever alters this edict let a timber be pulled from his house and erected and let him be hanged on it, and let his house be made a refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any king or people who put their hand to alter it or to destroy the house of God which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree. Let it be done diligently. Then Tatanai, governor of the region beyond the river, Shethar Boz Bosne and their companions diligently did according to what King Darius had sent. So the elders of the Jews built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the command of Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the children of Israel and the priests and the Levites and the rest of the descendants of the captivity celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. And they offered sacrifices at the dedication of this house of God, 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of the tribes. They assigned the priests to their divisions 
and the Levites to their divisions over the service of God in Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the descendants of the captivity kept the Passover in the fourteenth day of the first month, for the priests and the Levites had purified themselves, all of them were ritually clean, and they slaughtered the Passover lambs for all the descendants of the captivity, for their brethren and for, them, and for themselves. Then the children of Israel, who had returned from cap- captivity, ate together with all who had separated themselves from the filth of the nations of the land in order to seek the Lord God of Israel. And they kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with joy, for the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Um, let's pray real quick again. Uh, Father, we lift up um, our brother James to you uh, as he as he battles. And, and um, we just pray, Lord, for... Uh, wisdom for him for comfort for him god for strength lord to to take on the new challenges you've given him uh, god we pray for healing um lord, we thank you for all the healing you've already brought uh, i just pray pray lord for he and eula that you would uh, help them god that you would strengthen their marriage um, or keep the enemy out God, we uh, just ask a a blessing over their home as he transitions back home and and figuring out what that life is like and and, and as he works towards strength again. God, we lift up uh, our brothers and sisters who got persecuted around the world. Lord, I pray, God, for strength for them. Uh, Lord, uh, it it seems as though you're you're allowing us to head towards that. And I, I pray, God, that you would give us strength. Uh, not fear. Um, God, I pray, Lord, that you would bring us to repentance. God, that we would diligently seek you. God, that we diligently pray for uh, our nations, God, that that are so turned against you, Lord. And I pray, God, that we would be um, set apart. Uh, separated from the filths of the nations lord that you would help us not to be uh, soiled with the leaven god help us lord to uh, be useful to you we are your people called by your name that you've called us to to pray you've called us to be different you've called us to be salt and light to this world. Lord, help us, God, to do this. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, interesting thing, some interesting things. I, I kind of went through Ezra 6 last week. We're still going to kind of jump out of there a little bit, but I kind of wanted to look into who is... Well, let me give you a timeline first before we jump there. Let me give you a bit of a timeline. Nebuchadnezzar, was six, roughly 605 ish uh daniel's interpretation of nebuchadnezzar's dream dream 604 588 um the second siege of jerusalem begins 586 jerusalem falls 582 daniel interprets nebuchadnezzar's dream again uh 559 king cyrus starts to reign this is king cyrus who I want to say, I mentioned last week, but I don't have it written down this week. It was 150 years, I think, before he was even born that that, that by name he was called out as, as uh, the one who would uh, prepare the way for the return of um, for Jerusalem being rebuilt, the temple being rebuilt. And so that was you know prior to it even having fallen. Darius, uh, 539, no, sorry, 537, King Cyrus's proclamation, uh, 535 was read to start to re, start to rebuild it. So it was found by uh, King Darius. The proclamation was read. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I'm sorry, that's not correct. That's not correct. Um, 535, the temple work begins. 534, Artaxerxes stops the work after the, the group wrote and complained. Uh, 14 years later, the temple work is resumed. And then five, six years later, the, temp the temple is dedicated. Just to kind of give us a, a timeline of, of, you know, how long how long that took that fall and that rebuild process. So who was Zerubbabel? Um, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, also called Solatiel. Some, some, um, some of the genealogies you'll find, particularly Chronicles, we'll call him son of Padiah. There's lots of poten potential reasons why He's labeled in, in the Gospels as son of Sealtiel and, and Old Testament Padiah. It could, could have been the Levitical type of marriage where um, the, old, the older brother, Sealtiel, died. Padiah then marries his wife and has a child. That child then becomes legally the son of Sealtiel, if you recall the, um, the, uh, or the Bible documents that with uh, Judah. Judah's son. I'm trying to draw, draw a blank right now. Who that? Not kinsman redeemer. Where? John a blank of that. Hmm. Where? Where was that that happened? That that the the, uh, the the oldest son died. She married the next. Or she uh, she would not. She was not given the next. Then she went and uh, she she became you know. Judah's daughter-in-law. Yes, Tamar. Thank you, Tamar. He he wouldn't give him her another son. She then became like a prostitute, and so anyway, that that's that process that is believed potentially as to why we see this. You know, um, Zerubbabel shown as having two, you know two different fathers. One was his. His physical biological father, who was Padiah, one was his legal father, who was probably Padiah's older brother, who died maybe died young. This is you know somewhat conjecture, just trying to you know uh, solidify why why would we see this in scripture? But there's several explanations I read online that that seemed to be the one that makes makes the most sense um, is that Shealtiel was his legal father. Uh, Zerubbabel means born in Babylon. He was the leader of those moving back to Israel, became the governor of the people. Uh, we see him in Ezra 3. He and Jeshua stand up, and they began, they built the altar of God. They begin to restore the temple. They laid the foundation. But I, but I, I noticed an interesting thing when I was looking at it. And this was the first time they began. That I did not see that there was any word of the Lord that came. Nobody they they weren't called to do it. They had a heart to do it. Maybe the Lord laid on their heart. Let's begin to do this. They were worshiping the Lord. Let's begin to do this. And I and I think sometimes we have that tendency. The Lord lays something on our heart and we jump to it. Maybe before He was ready for us to do it because it, you know. They began doing work. Resistance comes. So what they did wasn't necessarily wrong, but maybe they didn't have the patience that the that the Lord had called them to have. They began the work. Something someone rose against them. The king said, "You got you got to stop what you're doing. You can't continue." And then and then we see in five again where they chapter five where the second month of King Darius, they stood back up again. But they stood back up again after they had the word of the Lord. They had God had. Uh, spoken to them through Hag Haggai chapter 1. And in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the Lord, the, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, to Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Jehoiakdaz, Jehoiakdaz, Jehoi Jehoiakdaz, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. 
So what what people are saying, it's, maybe it's just not time. I don't know. We we tried. It didn't work. It's just not the right time. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple lie in ruin? <coughs> Should you guys live in your nice nice places and my house is in ruin? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but you are not warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Haggai's prophesying to these guys who had started what the Lord had called them to do. It seemed like the Lord closed that door. Maybe maybe it wasn't the Lord actually closed the door. Maybe they, maybe they just got, you know what, there's a king telling us to stop. Maybe we, maybe we ought to listen to him. So I'm not going to, I don't think we can say that this was, they just, the work was stopped, and we don't necessarily know why. Was it the Lord's timing? He'd shut the door. Did they just become discouraged? Were they afraid in the face of a king? I don't know, but I think the reality is, is there's, there's often opposition, be it internal, be it external, uh, to something the Lord's laid on our heart to do. And... Um, and this, for me, was bringing it back to me. This was as I was studying this was a, you know, kind of a, a a wake up, a smack to say, you know, what are you working on? How how much time are you spending on your stuff? You're doing your thing, and maybe not doing what I've called you to do. Maybe not doing um, my my house lays in ruin. And I, the, I think the easy correlation there is the church building. You know, of course, this week was the uh, get the house ready, you know, for for Easter and stuff. And, and you know, the, the the easy correlation is whatever. What are we doing for this building? And I think there's there's some validity there, but there's also a we are God's temple. What what are we doing in our hours in the day? How much effort? How much time are we building in our little? I'm working out. I'm doing my job. I'm doing. The things to build my life, my existence here, to make it nice and cushy, my paneled life, versus my spiritual life. What am I? What effort am I putting in to building my temple for the Lord, that He would be uh, given honored in in my life, given honored in my Lord, and and when we don't do, put forth the effort needed to build our spiritual life to build our relationship with the Lord. You have sown so much and you bring in little. Our, our efforts are just not as valuable. They don't, they don't produce what we would think they would want to produce. You eat, but you don't have enough. We're just not satisfied no matter what, how nice the panels on our fleshly life are. It's just not satisfying. We're not going to get to the point where, ah, now I've got it. Now life is good. Now life is good, right? It's going to always leave us wanting more. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one's warm. But no one is warm. And everything you earn, just I mean, this this fleshly life is a is a bag with holes in it. No matter what you earn, you're just going to fall out when you die, right? So it's just for me, that was a a, a fresh reminder of. What efforts am I putting in towards this life? I don't think this is saying we don't put any effort towards this life. We're, we're here. We got to eat. We got to. But what is that? How much effort am I putting towards this life? How much effort am I putting towards towards uh, building God's temple, a place where He dwells in me, and that and that um, making that place a place of honor and, and a place that glorifies Him. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. Going up to the mountains. <laughs> it's interesting. There have been several times of late that I've just, man, I need to go up to the mountains <laughs> and just, you know, <coughs> get myself straight. And there's, there's times that's, 
You know, that, that's work he's talking about, going up the mountains and bring wood and build a temple. <coughs> the bring wood, under, I understand this is con- conjecture I'm going here, I'm not saying this is, but br- bring wood brought to my thought of the cross. You know, go up to the mountain and bring wood and, and, and you know, I think sometimes it takes effort. Sometimes it takes a, a sacrificing, not, not sometimes, it takes a sacrificing of your flesh um, to produce something that God may take pleasure in and be glorified. Okay, so who is Zerubbabel? Um, ultimately, it comes down to he was a man who started something that the Lord had called that that at least laid on his heart to start. He he became distracted. He became um, inhibited. He set it down, whether for fear, whether maybe the Lord just closed that door, as I said. Maybe he felt like he didn't have the resources. What it, whatever it is, it, he was stopped. The Zechariah also prophesied to Zerubbabel. And he said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Mountains can be moved. <clears throat> and he shall bring forth the capstone, the shouts of grace, grace to it. So Zerubbabel was uh, encouraged again in the second year, in the sixth month, to begin to build again, to begin by Haggai, by Zechariah. They both prophesied the word of the Lord to him and say, go do this thing. God has called you to do it. Go do it. It's no longer time for you guys to sit around and, and, and take care of yourselves. It's now time to, to build my temple. It's now time to do the work that I've called you to do. And so he stood back up and he began the work. Um, and I think sometimes we need to be reminded because <laughs> we get distracted and we get sidetracked and we get discouraged you might say, I'm not even a strong man. I'm not even a good man much of the time. And I think that's sometimes where we need to be to be reminded that it's not by our might. It's not by our power. It's not by our goodness. It's, it's by the Lord. It's by His Spirit that things are accomplished. So who is Zerubbabel? Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, oops, this is the wrong passage, sorry. And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai in the 24th day of the month saying, speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow overthrow the throne of the kingdoms i will destroy the strength of the gentile kingdoms i will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them the horses of the riders shall come down every one by the sword of his brother in that day says the lord of hosts i will take you zerubbabel my servant the son of shealtiel says the lord and will make you like a signet ring for i have chosen you says the lord of hosts this is a guy who one could say got off path. One could say maybe uh, failed to do what the Lord had initially laid on his heart to do. And I will make you like a signet ring. A signet ring is, that's, this is you know, h- how the king would mark a message from himself. Uh, this is from me. And I think it's it harkens to us as witnesses of Jesus that though we are not always useful, though we are broken, though we sometimes set set down our tools and quit 
quit the work and though we sometimes drop our sword and, and uh, become open to attack, um, the Lord has still chosen us. He still called us uh, to be His witnesses, to, to be a, a sign to the world of here's God pointing people to Jesus. God has also called us and uh, as, as a signet, that's an honored thing. And God has called us as men, uh, honored things when He calls us as witnesses. I'm going to go through just real quick the, the prophet, prophecies um, and the time frames of when they hit. Some of them are too long to read all at once, but I just wanted to share them with you. So in the second year of Darius, the sixth month and the first day, Haggai prophesies. This is the one about the paneled houses. Should you just sit around in your paneled houses or should you build the Lord? So that's, that's in, the, in the sixth day, first month. Sixth day, twenty-four. sixth month, 24th month. Mm-mm-mm-mm, no. Sixth year, sixth month, 24th day. <coughs> On the 24th day of the ninth month. No, 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 sorry, wrong one. That is 14, there we go. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of the hosts, their God, the 24th day of the sixth month of the second year of Darius. So, so the Lord stirred them up to get started on that. Then on the seventh month, 21st day of the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Je- Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, and the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? How do you see it now? In comparison with this, is it not your is it is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the word which I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit remains among you. Do not fear. And then down on the 24th day of the ninth month of the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, now ask the priest concerning the now ask the priests concerning the law, saying, If one carries holy meat to the in the fold of his garment, and with the edge he touches the bread or stew or wine or oil or any food, will it become holy? And the priest answered and said, No. And Haggai said, If one who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these will it be unclean so the priest answered and said it shall be unclean then Haggai answered and said so is this people and this nation before me says the Lord and so is every work of their hands that they have offered promised blessing and now carefully consider from this day forward from before from before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days when one came to a heap of twenty ephahs, there were but ten. When one came to a wine vat to draw out fifty baths from the press, there were but twenty. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail and all your labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me, said the Lord. Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month of the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not yet yielded fruit, but from this day I will bless you. So they have, on this day, they rebuilt just the foundation. It's done. The foundation is done. But that was a no small day to the Lord. He's a, he, he looks and he says, 
isn't this kind of nothing compared to its former glory? Are any of you old enough to remember its former glory? This is a small thing, but he marks this thing as from this day forward. You've built the foundation. I, I will bless you. And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride them. Their horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, Son of Shealtiel, says the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you. And we mentioned that. And I just, for me, as I read through this and kind of studied the timeline, and it, it was a good reminder, a good uh, shaken up. I, I reached out to uh, Harry and Denny. A couple of um, insights that I read that were kind of from studying Ezra 6. Even with the doors open, so Lord had opened the doors. The work was still difficult and needed prophetic encouragement. God's blessing on the work did not make the work easy to do. And I, and I think sometimes I fall into a, a, a desire for, for it to be easy, for this walk with the Lord to be easy. And building the temple is not easy work. It takes effort. It takes... It takes um, intentionality to seek the Lord to walk with the Lord to um, not not that we work ourselves into any uh, place of righteousness but it takes intentionality to seek that relationship to build it so that we're useful that we that we actually glorify our king.